once I started DJing on my own and, you know, started doing different sort of genres, then I was like thinking that I can promote a party myself. <laughs> <laughs> it is harder than it looks. Dude, it is absolutely. <laughs> I, I think there is not one DJ that I know mm-hmm. that I've spoken to mm-hmm. that have tried to, well, they've all tried to, you know, say, hey, I'm a rent a spot and I'm going to yeah. do my own party. And it was not successful. It was a complete failure. Um, yeah. I remember doing my first party. It was a college party. And I was like, yo, you know, I, I was I was a popular DJ in college, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking, okay, if I threw my own party, people would come. Dude, I think um, maybe <laughs> five people came. <laughs> <laughs> and the club owner was like uh back then you either pl- you either paid the club you know or wherever you were doing a party you paid them to rent out their space or mm-hmm. you guaranteed yeah. a certain bar you know yes so i think i guaranteed a certain like bar amount so um yeah. i didn't hit it so <laughs> i had to come out my pocket dude <laughs> oh you know? That was not cool. What about you? Like, <laughs> did you so have? Did you start like um, doing your own parties, and you know, after a while, they became successful, or you just you you did a few, they did not do well. <laughs> how how did it so, how did it work for you? Initially, here uh, there's promoters that would book you or you know work with you, and they would get you into the big clubs, and then they'll just give you a percentage right. of the pot. Mm-hmm. But so when I started DJing, I started in high school and in high school, we did the house parties like ba- We call it bashment parties. So being in somebody's basement when their parents weren't home or whatever. And so we get the speakers we do all that stuff. And those I did a couple of those. They were OK. Uh, and then I took a break and I came back to DJing and I was like, OK, well, I, I know some people I'm going to try and do this stuff outside of the promoters, whatever, and try and do my own party. And that filled miserably. I spent thousands on this thing and it was a, a disaster. Oh, you came out uh, your own pocket. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I paid for a uh, flyers. I paid right. for a door person. Uh, I had to pay for the, the club to rent the club. And then the club had a, uh, they had a deposit that you had to put down to cover for the bar mm-hmm. and to pay the people who are there for the night. <laughs> and so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't come close to that. I think that the most I had was like 20 people. Wow. And it was, it was a, it was a miserable experience. What was the and capacity was there, of the club? The capacity. Oh, so this is, this is my first problem. Okay. I was thinking too big and yeah, I was working with some people that were like, Oh yeah, yeah, no, we can help you fill it, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, uh, the club was like 500 people Ooh. around that, around that range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the thing is though, if you have a club that holds a hundred people and 30 people come out, it looks like a good night still. It looks pretty good. Right. Doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like it looks all right. You know, it's mm-hmm. a little sparse in some sections, but you know, people don't notice this is going to vibe and have fun. When you have a place that holds 500 people and 30 people come out, that is a bloodbath. That's and I got staff. an email from the <laughs> the owner of the club. And he's like, congratulations. You are the worst promoter I've ever had to use my venue before. You, I and, will never use you again. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> that that hit my soul. So, uh, yeah, that's when I was like, you know, maybe I'm not cut out for the promoting thing. That's like yeah. pr- promoting the people who promote. Like, they have a network of women <laughs> that do the hard live heavy lifting for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of DJs are like, well, I'll just get my friends and they'll tell friends and they'll just turn into a, no, it's not going to turn into a thing. You need select uh, influencers <laughs> to say, Hey, this is what we're doing and mm-hmm. have them spread the word for you. Right. And that turns into the thing. So I've done colossal disasters like that. <laughs> I've done okay stuff where, you know, like, maybe a hundred or so people showed up and, you know, it was okay. But I realized early on that being a promoter is a different world. Totally and different. As a DJ, it never used to be a thing of, well, I have to DJ plus promote my party. It used to be promoters were a thing 
And then you used to work your way into working with them. And then they would just call you up anytime they needed somebody or somebody canceled. Like, hey, can you come do this thing on Tuesday or whatever? 